All right. Um, thanks everybody for joining another episode of the OpenJS Foundation's uh, Security Collaboration Space. Today is the 6th of November in 2023. And um, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get this stuff all plugged into the meeting uh, minutes here, but um, yeah, we've got a light agenda and we'll see uh, what we've got on um, any of the other areas that we're uh, looking to make progress here. Um, so let me uh, just add my thing there, uh, drop the minutes into the chat here for folks. And uh, if you can add yourself, that's great. Uh, we really only have one item on the agenda um, so we can, uh, get into that in, two, in, in a minute. Um, first we'll start with any announcements. Sure. I'll make an announcement. Uh, last week, in case you missed it, we made an announcement about the, uh, IDC research, uh, that we launched as part of our Alpha Omega grant on web security, showing three quarters of a billion websites are out of date. Um, that's kind of going to be part of a campaign to help modernize the consumer web. And uh, our call to action really is if you're a tech technology provider, partner, consumer advocacy group, government person, or just somebody who's interested in web security and open source, please reach out to me um, or probably any of us. Um, and we'd love to sort of, you know, brainstorm ways that we can amplify the message we do really want to make a big dent in getting people to move um, to upgrade or move off outdated open source technologies. Um, we looked at the, you know, the research through the lens of jQuery, um, but really the people that we surveyed said that jQuery really wasn't the cause of their security incidents. I think we had about 30% say that they had a security incident in the past two years. Um, but we sort of see it as sort of a canary in the coal mine. So if you're using jQuery, that may not be the reason that you're out to date, but it probably means that you don't have policies and processes in place to patch and upgrade your software, particularly with open source. So um, we're going to have a healthy web checkup tool that will launch um, in early 2024 so people can see, um, one, what version they're using of jQuery, that could give you a hint if you have old stuff. Um, and then we're looking to add some other JavaScript projects. So if you're interested in adding your JavaScript project to the uh, version checker, we can do that. Great. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Very helpful. Cool. Uh, Chris? Yeah, I'm just uh, curious if anyone knows off the top of their head. Uh, do are there any like code mods that exist for jQuery upgrades? No, but we will be pro providing some documentation on how to do that. Because I know that like there's like a depend like a deprecation tool or something like that that will point out. Yeah. One know. of the um, important things for people who go, oh my gosh, I have jQuery is. Um, jQuery is used in uh, WordPress and Bootstrap, so that's, you know, the huge saturation rate. But um, currently, from 2021 on, which is not that long, uh, WordPress, for example, automatic ships the latest version of jQuery. So if you're on a version that's prior to 2021 uh, of WordPress or Bootstrap, it could be uh, very well likely that you're using old and unsupported software. Interesting. So does that mean, uh, we don't need to get too much into the details here, but is WordPress like dynamically uh, uh, loading the latest yeah. version of jQuery no matter? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool, good for them and good yeah. for us. Great, 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 great. Mm -hmm. um, any, anything else on the announcement side, y'all? Uh, we have GitHub Universe this week. Jordan will be there. I will be there. Other folks from OpenJS will be there, folks on our board. So again, if you're um, out and about and want to meet with us, please reach out. Um, I think Jordan will be at the maintainers event tomorrow. Some other things will be there for keynotes. I'll be at the Women in Tech 
dinner on Wednesday. So yeah, if you want to get more involved in OpenJS generally, um, there'll be a smattering of some cool OpenJSers there. Cool. Um, great. Uh, any other announcements? No? We have the RFI deadline. I don't know if that's on our issue this week deadline. So I'll be sending over a draft um, that I've been working on. There shouldn't be any surprises. A lot of the same messages we use with our Sovereign Tech Fund grant. Um, and then my friends at Tidelift uh, nicely shared their draft as well. There's some great information on the on the volunteer network that um, open source relies upon, which is super relevant to OpenJS and the JavaScript ecosystem. But I'll send it around for this group before I submit, but you should, it shouldn't be any surprises. It should be some of the messages that we've been carrying forward. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, maybe also point out that today is the last day for the nominations for the cross project council director seat. Um, so if, if uh, anybody's been putting that off, submitting their name, uh, today's the last day and the form is public. It is now. Uh, I will likely extend, I think, the date due to some of the issues that happened with that form. I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. Um, but yes, good reminder to, to have folks. Um, uh, nominate themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great, 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 great. Um, anything else before we uh, get into the meat of, of the meeting? The meat of the meeting. I don't, I don't know if I ever said that. Um, cool. All right. Well, um, let me look at this uh, issue here. So the, the first and only issue on the agenda is uh, number 53, um, and this is a uh, request. For, oh, this is the, the RFA that you, that you were just talking about, right, Robin? Um, request for information on open source software security. Yeah, let me go to, I didn't see the issue on our Up there the agenda. Chat. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there it is, number 53. Um, cool. So I don't know if there's anything really more to add to that. Um, if not, I will just uh, highlight this issue <clears throat> that I think um, I should maybe put the agenda label on. Uh, security agenda. There we go. Um, and this was the issue that we created um, after closing the best prescriptive best practices tool chain issue. Because uh, I think we realized that, you know, maybe tool chain wasn't the right uh, thing we were looking for, uh, just more or less trying to figure out a good, you know, documenting security practices, um, you know, across the spectrum from the uh, low hanging fruit to the, the more involved um, aspects, but also for different um, use cases, different projects, types, um, you know, uh, a variety of things. So. Uh, folks can take a look at that issue and we can uh, perhaps we should spin up a doc and start to just drop some thoughts into it or I mean I guess we can drop some thoughts into the issue for now and then and then uh, start to work on a doc as we develop things um, I suspect some of this will come out of the work that Jordan's been doing as well that's that's will kind of pull into this larger effort um what else do we want to talk about? Do we want to, uh, anything from your side, Ben and, and Jordan? Uh, Jordan, I, we did discuss having something to review today, but I didn't, I didn't touch base with you before. I don't know if you're ready to talk about the SBOM doc. Um, so I still have two to do sections on it. I've done uh, all but that. Um, so you're, you all are welcome to keep looking at it, um, but it's not like, ready to put in the PR quite yet. I'm planning to finish that this afternoon. Okay. I mean, should we look at it? We've got the time and we got Matt and yeah. Chris here. Only if you, you know, only if you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can just skip the two sections that are still to do's. Uh, I'll paste the hack good. MD link in the chat. Yeah, and if anybody wants to share that, uh, maybe you, Jordan. Yeah. Uh, all feedback is good, and oh yeah, I'm on my iPad, so it'd be great if someone else shared. But uh, yeah, all feedback yeah. is good, and and I I wouldn't want to waste the rare opportunity to have people 
face to face. So yeah, and we got <laughs> time. Great. So that's great. All right, hang on just a moment. We got a 403, but I'm guessing that's probably only because I am not logged in. Now I'm having to find all squares with motorcycles. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, I can see it now. It's not logged in. Okay. Right. You have the notes on these second panel. You have a different view. Is this what you're looking for? The comments? No. When I open uh, up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, Robin, that's um, that's a feature of 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 uh, HackMD, which um, we don't need to do right now. It's basically the left side is markdown and the mm -hmm. right side is, is rendered. So, um, I'm just captured in the notes, though, all the other stuff. Okay. Yeah, and I think most of the comments uh, that I, for some reason I can't find the there used to be a way to like resolve things in HackMD. I can't find that, but um, the I don't believe any of the comments are still applicable. And if they are, like, let me know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the, this is what I wrote for the summary. Um, happy to get mm -hmm. wordsmithing here. For people who weren't here last week, we had or oh, two yeah. weeks ago, we talked about having a point of view, right? Um, mm -hmm. And recommendation. I also uh, spoke with some Alpha Omega reps as well. They absolutely highly endorse the fact that we should have a point of view, and they're happy to to come if they need, if we need to bounce things off of them as well. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean the the point of view I would like to have is that uh, that the that. It, uh, the npm that an npm packages should provide enough information so that an end user can generate and infer all the s bombs they need at the time that they need them so they can be most up to date and that we should uh, figure out what we can tell package authors to so that they can validate that they're providing as uh, what you know what information they're providing and maximize the information they're providing um, but the ideal is that all the things they're already doing give it, you know, work by default so that they don't have to do anything. Um, but so that, that's the point of view I'd like us to have. Um, but, you know, I don't know if that jives with everyone else. And that's just one persona, for lack of a better term, right? W would we have any thoughts about other types of JavaScript? projects yeah i mean that that's a good point right there's the package author but then there's also uh an application like an application owner right with you know that's an it person or a devops or whatever but not the owner and that person is the one who usually uh they that person has a number of different potential use cases one is that they need to uh determine if their their application is vulnerable to something or not uh or if you know they need to look, just determine if there's a bad actor in their de their depth graph, or if there's a license problem and things like that. Um, another use case, though, is that they have an application that they package and distribute, and that they need to then account for what is you know in their what what has helped build and is inside their distributed software uh, to whoever they're giving it to or to the government. Um, and so, but all, but for me, all of the application use cases seem kind of similar, although I'm sure the technical requirements are different. Um, but that like those are that's sort of what I have in mind. Are there other personas besides that that I'm missing? Uh, I'm not sure. That, 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 that sounds like you got everything there. Matt, do you have a comment? I see you're off mute. Yeah, well, no, I, I, well, I just going to say that, you know, Jordan and I had a long, se longer session. I see a lot of my semantics and a lot of, a lot of my thoughts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, all the bullet points in the to-do sections are just the, what I was <laughs> typing during our conversation, Matt. And I usually am hiding those in HTML comments um, as I write but, the section. And, and no, I th I didn't know you taking that, uh, the note taking was so well done by you. So thanks. Um, <laughs> but it goes back to, you know, Jordan and I, you know, try to talk about, you know, I, you see the link to cycle index use cases. And I've told the story here before. It's like, you know, if you, depending on your persona, there's a set of use cases. And I think that, you know, we could call out different personas and what use cases they might be interested in. But I think more and more, 
<clears throat> from a security perspective, everyone's concerned about security. And there's, you know, and I think that, you know, initially, like Jordan and I talked about, it's all about first identifying the components, I call it use case zero, and mm -hmm. then using that to look, to, if you have a vulnerability, I'd see if you're part of that blast radius, you know, reverse lookup, do it my, is this in my inventory? And that's always the top use case from a security point of view, but, you know, more and more, it's listening more towards how did you build the software and going back to what's the provenance and pedigree of the software, who, who touched it basically. And did it, was it, you know, was it safe? Was it built in a safe way? So anyway. Makes sense. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to ask a controversial question. So um, I know that there's two kind of competing tools and standards for mm -hmm. SBOMs, right? Cyclone and SPDX. Um, are we going to make a call in this document on which one we would recommend going if you wanted to use one of them? I mean, I don't think... I don't think this document is guidance for how to use S bombs. It's guidance on like, because there are so many tools there that, that that's like a whole, like, you know, a thousand other documents. Um, and, and it's also the, the, that tooling ecosystem is in its infancy, right? So it's, it would be way too premature to tell people how to use them anyway. Um, so if that is, if everyone agrees with that take, then I don't think that we should be telling people which format to use. And I think that in, if that we are telling, if at any point we decide we need to tell people to generate a thing in a format, I think the wisest thing to do is to tell them to generate it in all of the formats that are available, just to make sure that the most possible people can use it and the most information is captured and so on. So like, unless it's actively harm, unless a format is deemed actively harmful, I feel like uh, we shouldn't, we should always go out of our way to to not pick a winner or like we, yeah, we should uh, strongly avoid picking a winner. That was a lot right. I, I remember this from our conversation, right? Where one of the issues right. is that you can't predict um, what systems a consumer of your package is going to use. So they may be using right. Cyclone DX to validate their stuff, or they might be using SPDX. So you really don't know. And so- right. In a, in a world like that, then it, if you're a publisher, you should publish both. Right. Like you don't know if somebody's going to be using Yarn or PNPM or whatever, or NPM with your package. And it's a, it's, it would be a bad, even if you really think that they should be using one of those things and you have a strong opinion about it, it would not be a, being a good citizen to do things that would make it harder for everyone else to use your package. Right. Like, so in other words, it's even if the, the foundation has an opinion and a recommendation about one of the formats as a winner, that's great, but we shouldn't be telling package authors or, or, or software distributors, I think, to pick one. We should be telling the end users to pick one. And then at some point, maybe no one will care about the other formats. And then it doesn't matter if they're not generated, but like the, you know, the cart needs to go after the horse, <laughs> right? Like, like the format has to actually die before we tell people not to do it. And, and and not the other way around. Matt, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I mean, I, this is why I emphasize use cases because, um, you know, if you have, it, it goes back to, if you, if you decide what format you want to produce canonically or what tools you look to find that produces that format, it's going to be based upon your, your information needs based upon your use cases. The example I use most recently is ML bombs and cryptographic bombs. So, you know, until SPDX 3.0 com comes out, you don't even have attestations, you don't have provenance, you don't have pedigree, you don't have a lot of things. It's just not there until 3.0. And we've been waiting three years and counting. Um, and then we're going to be reducing 1.6 Cyclone come this fall. And it's going to become an international standard because it has, it has ML as of July, and it will have cryptographic bill materials. So if you have that data, and you need to give that to the world in a standard format, you should base it upon the use case that you need that format to, to express that um, in a standard way. So I mean, giving advice around use cases, I think that's what I've, I've grounded all of my education material inside IBM on. And it, I mean, it's, it works with any standard. You pick a standard based upon does it meet your 
use case needs, right? And in going forward, it should. If you are if you ship or you have a dependency on ciphers, you need to have a C bomb. You need to you need to express that. And I don't. And SPDX hasn't even formed a work group on cryptographic bills and materials. So, and if it's about ML, um, like I said, they they just started a work group in the last month or two, and I I don't know how long it's going to take them to come out with a profile or what changes we'll have to like if we waited three years or 3.0 is it good to wait for 3.1 or i don't i don't know so if you have to express that in 2025 that's the deadline where you have to be have quantum safe ciphers you need to express that so you have to make good choices based upon where where the world's headed as well so anyway <laughs> just so i i understand are, are you uh suggesting that uh cyclone is further along in some of those areas like c bomb and, and ml bomb okay yeah this spdx is just copying <laughs> they create a work group once they see we publish something in the in a, i say we because so i was part of the 1.5 spec yeah yeah and, okay. I, and i am the ibm rep to spdx i've been attending developer calls and they're still stuck in rdf how do i convert to shackle and and support my RDF tools from 10 years ago. So that's where the, there's, there's still no promises of when they're going to have three pointed out. So, I mean, the problem is, is that, you know, SPDX, despite being backed by Linux Foundation, could be left behind. And especially with uh, Cyclone Dex becoming an international standard. I'm not saying, I'm saying Jordan's position is completely valid, but I'm saying always describe things in terms of use cases, saying, look at the use cases and decide what's best for, for your needs, right? But is I don't know if it's the Linux Foundation or the members of OpenSSF who are rallying around SPDX. And so yeah, I guess the question is, do we, I know there's multiple standards for similar. No, it's just, it's a rubber stamping because it's part of the Linux family. So, I mean, the SBOM Everywhere work group is, is still going under Josh and they're not trying to, I mean, I've had to defend package URL, which can be part of the ECMA standard the last minute because basically only five people are attending the work group and they're all being people in the, from the SPDX community. So um, you're going to get the answer. You're only going to get one answer. Uh, so anyway, and I guess the question is, if we want to, if we're taking a point of view, we are going to pick winners and losers, but we can pick a couple and for category because if you, you know, is that where we need to be? Should, we should be forward looking, right? So, I mean, well, I, I think it'd be. Oh, no, sorry. Go ahead, Jordan. I was just going to say it's it's not necessarily winners. I think we should be picking what are the viable options? Like we should, we shouldn't make it say, we shouldn't tell people pick any format you want. We should tell them use SPDX or Cyclone DX or exactly. a, a third thing if it comes out that is viable, right? But like, so we should be filtering an infinity down to a finite list. We mm -hmm. just don't necessarily, I, I don't think it would be a great idea to pick one winner unless and there is like only one viable option. Yeah, I don't like the concept of winners and losers, but oh, in, right. in the notion of we should have a point of view on something as critical as security, yeah, you know, then I'm, you are I'm, 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 choosing a, a preferential approach. I'm all, I'm all for the put the put the uh, manufacturer sticker in the car window, <laughs> and say invite comparison. Say here is the link mm -hmm. to the use cases over here, and the spec over here. Here's a link to the use cases over here. You make a decision which you know has right. the date information you need, right? Yeah. But just you know, writing a document with the current status of everything isn't really a value add for this group, I think. And so that's where, you know, I'm trying to push us a little bit forward and here and what I've heard from Alpha Omega as well. So. And just to be clear, are you saying that, that you think if we are to choose, we should choose SPDX in this document? Or maybe just be clear that it has to be one or the other and, and look out for a couple of key scenarios, you know, or use cases. Yeah. Uh, two, one thing to call out that's interesting is Josh is pushing for not only file naming conventions, which I think will not go anywhere, but he's also pushing that people he's going to require people to put, uh, publish JSON format as well. So that should be noted as well. I don't know who Josh is. So is it uh, Josh Buster? He, Josh Buster, he, he's a, he was the chair who just resigned from the security working group, but he still chairs the SBOM Everywhere SIG at OpenSSS. Okay. And I would actually say that one of our opinions should be we need file conventions. Um, and if they're not, if they're not going to be any coming from the wider SBOM effort, then we should define them for JavaScript. Um, and I've already made comments on the, the SBOM SIG uh, on a, a GitHub issue or something with my suggestions. So like, if they don't want to take them, that's fine. Yeah. Um, like if they don't want to provide any recommendation, that's fine. I just, then that will be my suggestion to this group. And that yeah, is so also I, an I, opinion. I, yeah. I think that, I guess my point is, is that if you say produce SPDX, you're still using 2.3 generation tools. 
people are still pursuing TV format, which everyone hates now, or XML. But going forward, it looks like that JSON is going to be the definitive format for either standard. And actually, all all of the transmission protocols for for um, SPDX are going to be using JSON LD. So if you want to transmit it, you have to be in JSON. If you want to do you know wire network transmission. Yeah, I would imagine we would favor that, and and I agree with the 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 you know uh, establishing a naming convention. You know, even if it's just for our community. <clears throat> and then, Robin, if I assuming setting aside wordsmithing and assuming that I fill in the two to do sections in a way that's satisfying, uh, it what more does this document need before it's ready to be published? In your opinion? Um, well, I haven't. Like, I haven't taken a close look at it yet, but yeah. Sure. So. Okay. Yeah, I meant more like in broad categories, right? Like you don't have to just more like, so you've said like you want us to have an opinion and that stating a summary of uh, like stating the status isn't much of a value add. So that's fine. Um, what conceptually like, what is what what sorts of things need to be here for you to feel like it's valuable to publish the document? Like, like, do we need to just say, this is what you should do in anything? Like, is it, do you want us? So looking at the subheads, uh, you've yeah. got summary. What is, it, what is it? What problems are they resolving? History sure. and limitations. So it doesn't seem like we're really advocating for it until. Yeah, that part is more like an intro. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to reverse pyramid it a little bit for okay. folks who don't sort of read on it's kind of my old journalism to make it sound like we are fully endorsing the use of s bombs for x y and z um and okay. this will be a guide to help you you know know how to apply it to your blog i mean given okay. matt's mm -hmm. comments to me it sounded like um a set of personas mm -hmm. or use cases and then what we recommend to do mm -hmm. in each of those. Yeah. But the yeah. fact is that okay. they're they're here, they're a good thing. Um, make sure you build this into your, you know, solutions or projects. Um, and then because otherwise they're gonna go, oh yeah, kind of doesn't look like it's ready. I don't know if I really need to do this by the time they read on and on and on, right? Mm -hmm. I mean. I think that it isn't ready though. Like that's, that's what I mean is like the S bombs are, are, go are going to be the university or the, the industry wide way to answer these questions. But for the JavaScript ecosystem, it, it not much is going to change because we've had, we've already had these mechanisms by and large for a decade. So it's like for the, from the JavaScript point of view, like we definitely should be influencing those standards in an organized way, right. To try and, make sure that they don't require something onerous of us. Um, but like, there just isn't much need for it. Like if you're, if you have a, a NPM installed depth graph and you want to know what you're vulnerable to, you can already see that. And the only thing that might be tricky is a compiled dependency, but the answers for how you make that better don't exist yet for S bombs. I think we just, I think we need the context up front a little bit more and okay. endorsing it even in saying that you have this here just so people know what it is mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying it's you're we're kind of missing the the, the endorsement slash connective glue to how this is applicable to javascript up front right i, I guess I, it feels like that's because those things don't aren't there yet because it's not endorsable yet and there isn't the connective glue yet and people are still building it we're so building. it's like so I think the idea is that we're going to be building it and being a part of that solution. So oh, here's we're going to be building a solution doesn't come with a recommendation because well, there's nothing well, to recommend it. Well, recommend well, I mean, OpenSSF is trying to build it as well as other right. communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. so it's it's there. The problem the problem comes that which recommending in this and this is something that OpenSSF is steered away from as well is is recommending tools. So mm -hmm. so if you as long as you have the, a good generator who knows your language. And knows how to look up dependencies. You can get there. And you know, if you look at you know where OpenSSF had, is headed, it's headed with Guac. So what does Guac take as an input? A 
Cyclone DX or SPDX S bomb. So you know, open, the ecosystem is being built out to like look at your look at your dependency graphs and your knowledge base. Right. And you can call out. You know, the problem is if if I were doing this, I would probably set aside. And actually, there's an internal thing that I heard somebody did. I need to look up on. But you know, what I did two and a half, three years ago, which is run all download all the tools and just run them off of whatever code I had. Which I had GoLang code and probably some Python code at the time, and see what it did. And, you know, just, you know, have a list of, you know, not I mean, just saying, if you, if you try out these things, I would probably have some blogs or something else not associated with some deterministic thing, but say, you know, here's some tools you could try. And just like, I, you know, firsthand experience, you know, use CDX Gen for CycleNDX, use, you know, use the um, open version of Sonotype or use Trivi, Aqua Trivi, use the open version of this and it'll do well. In, but, you know, here's what you would get out of it. If you run it out of the box, here's the use cases it gives you. You know, maybe right. you do a little evaluation and just like just give a listing of tools without recommending them. You know what I mean? And but then I guess, you guess say yeah. here's Guac, and once you have the S the S bomb in either, either format, you can run it in Guac and look at, and look at your dependency crap uh, graphs, and you or you can run it in the Cyclone DX dependency track, upload it there, and look at your stuff, and look at the vulnerabilities, and look at whatever. So anyway, right? But like nobody's going to show up and be like, I want to do stuff with S bombs, like. They need to have, like you said, you phrase everything in terms of use cases. They need to know why they care and before they try any of these tools. And I have not yet come up with a use case that isn't already solved in the JavaScript ecosystem such that SBOMs would be helpful. So I I still think that there isn't any value for a, a JavaScript people doing anything with SBOMs yet. And that's what I'm like, I don't, I don't think that that exists yet. I think it can in the future. And the the biggest value or potential there is interoperability with non JavaScript code. Actually, 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 I'm glad I'm glad I took a hiatus because the last call I probably was you know ended up looking like a debate between you and I, which I don't want that to happen today. No, yeah, and that's it's just. But I would say that I'll just say as a closing point is that nine nine point nine nine percent don't care if they're if they buy a new car if it's got airbags in in it until they until they need them, you know. Sure. Yeah, I I think if if you know. If Alpha Omega or Sovereign Tech Fund or anybody says, oh, we ha have a report from OpenJS that says, yeah, we don't really need SWAMs, that's going to be the headline, right? So I think. Yeah, well, I don't want us to say that. Mm -hmm. I, it's just, I, I don't know what else we can say that's honest <laughs> because there isn't a, a, a clear, a compelling use case that says we need them yet. And so that's like, I'm trying to do the best I, the best I could do, which I'll was. Say, a, I mean, a good use go case for the persona of developers. But yeah. almost all the other, sure. all, all the all, every downstream consumer, there is a compelling use case. They Just need to be able to case. explain to their boss how this project satisfies the concept of an S bomb, I guess. Right. Right. But like you can type NPM S bomb now and do that. So, like, what else do we need to do? If that's if I haven't looked at the output, if you said that that it, you say here you run this is the lowest. It, it takes your lock file and it spits oh, out uh, an S bomb. Yeah, yeah. I'm not asking. I'm just. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'm just saying that like that's not well. That's what most simple things do. They look at your lock file, package dot you know package dot JSON, requirements dot text, whatever language you have. That's the minimum. And so, but you have to be clear. If you do this, it's the lowest common denominator. Here's mm -hmm. the type of S bomb you get. You can only do these use cases do better if you want to try to do better here's the next step of set of tools you might want to look at type of thing right and then the, the admonition is publish it when you publish your thing to the registry or your to your to a release in a, in a github repo produce it perhaps with a naming convention open ssf is coming up with publish it in json format and make sure it's you know it's signed alongside your artifact for your library that's what you can do i'm okay so i hear you but I'm still not seeing a reason why that matters. Like all, like I'm, I'm being told like people that there are companies that care about it, but nobody's explained why they care, what the, what it requires, and what enables them to do that they can't already do with just npm install and the lock file that that generates. And I think that's what's missing here. Because if you know, if it comes yeah. to Joe and I saying let's go forward with, with no no JS or JavaScript as a preeminent language, we, we endorse an IBM. I'll say no, not secure, not giving us S bombs. So you know that's if that's not a good enough reason. I mean, if you're always taking the developer persona, I don't think how we'll ever move forward. Anyway, I mean, it's I understand why an IBM requirement is important to IBM. Well, but anybody, if like, I was from Microsoft or for Google, as a, any, anybody puts their security hat on. 
anybody who's who 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 has experienced mm-hmm. any enterprise, you know, ever across the what's the survey from 2022? 94 percent of all industry source code, proprietary source code, uses open source. Sure. Every everyone and, and everyone's afraid of being the subject of the next victim of major vulnerability blast radius. Sure. And and if if you tell me that I'm using a bunch of JavaScript code in the back end or front end, and there's a vulnerability, and I could have I could have fixed that, identified that these projects in an automated way was part of this blast radius, and be able to fix that as a cert team within 24 hours, or have to grep through code or run you know parse through code on binary code mm-hmm. and servers or whatever. What which one? I mean, everyone will care at that point. So it goes back to my analogy of. You don't care if you've got a you know airbag in your car or airbag in your car until sure. you need it. Right? But NPM audits existed for eight years. You don't need an S bomb to do that. So I'm looking for a use case that you can't do without an S bomb right? because to me that's what will make a compel- for a compelling endorsement. But you're you're saying that the problem is people are not going to run necessarily. You you have hybrid applications. You're not going to run NPM audit everywhere you have stuff in. in it runs every time you run NPM install. So everyone has been running it for eight years. It just may not block their CI, and that's the point I agree with. It may not be doing. But if they're not doing I, that, I, S-bombs I, don't enable that. I, I'll, they stop. Can just... I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, I'll, yeah. You'll never be convinced, Jordan. I'm sorry. No, I mean, it's it's. I'm, I'm just trying to understand. Like, I'm not, I'm really not saying that we shouldn't do S-bombs. I'm saying that, like, I'm trying to represent a cohort of the people we're asking to care. <laughs> and I think but that if we're there, we're at. Your yeah. example still is a developer persona. That's all I'll say. Sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's who needs to care. That's what the OpenJS Foundation is is like primarily serving to me in my mind is the developers. We're serving everybody. Well, uh, right. Yeah, but I, I tend to disagree. I think you're actually serving this. the customers as well because yeah. actually corporations like mine, we look to the foundation to have set those standards for their developers to ensure that we're getting a, I don't want to say level of service, but a different level of service that right. we would get from going just to Joe Blow XYZ's package. That there's a certain so, amount of standardization and or guarantee, sure. guarantee behind them. That's different than something else. So, so that makes sense. How can we get the maintainers of the individual packages sure. who do not take technical interference from the OpenJS Foundation or technical direction from the foundation, how can we get them to care? The answer is they're developers. So we find a developer persona compelling use case. That's what drives everything. Without that, nothing can get done. We have we have requirements to have projects be under OpenJS put forward by the cross project council, right? So sure. you know. but I don't I can't imagine that the cross project council, like even with me abstaining, would would agree to putting such requirements on there unless there's a compelling developer use case. Well, or, let's or just rationale. say maybe not required, but strongly encouraged and having a point of view again. You know. Right. But I, again, without a developer compelling use case for this developer persona, I, I don't think anyone, I don't think there's a point of view to give. I'd love to hear one because I want us to have that point of view. But no one's giving me one. They're just saying corporate requirements, but it's not all corporations. And like, <laughs> I see Chris's hand up. Yeah. Yeah. Ahead, Chris. um, yeah. So respectfully, we're starting to talk in circles a little bit. Um, okay. I, I want to return to the document. Uh, for OpenJS SBOM current recommendations. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, uh, the goal of the document is quite vague. Uh, it, it's just like oh. we want to push security stuff forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I, I'm asking, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on the document, but like, what is the goal of this document? Like more specifically, what problem are we solving with this document? That's not clear to me. I think it's probably not clear to me either, which is why we've been talking in circles. Um, if the goal is to just have us say stuff about S bombs, like that seems less valuable to me than if it's to try to make the ecosystem more secure by way of S bombs. So that's that's what I would hope the goal of the document is. But the maybe goal, everyone else says, yeah. And I've had conversations with with the Alpha Omega folks, and I wrote the the grant application, and um, mm-hmm. again with Sovereign Tech Fund. The goal is to have a point of view. Again, S bombs are here. Governments are going to require them. What should the JavaScript ecosystem do to get ahead of it, to comply, to, you know, and not again, a, a current status. Anybody can just, you know, probably understand, but the context of where it is and where we need to go um, and what projects and maintainers should, should take, should 
should address, what end users need to understand if you're using JavaScript, all of those things. But again, more forward looking. Yeah. Uh, point of view. So, right. So I think you're going to have all of these unanswered questions for mm -hmm. some time, right? Uh, some indefinite amount of time. Uh, and the document then probably just needs to provide those paths on how you do this. Here's how you, here's tooling for generating SBOMs should you want to generate SBOMs. Uh, you know, maybe the document cannot right now provide a compelling uh, argument for a developer to actually include this in their package and bundle it and increase their bundle size, et cetera, et cetera. But you can at least provide this information should they want to do it. And in the future, you could fill in the gaps on here, here are some compelling cases that we can identify now. Um, but why, in the absence why would, of that, oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I've not, I've now lost my train of thought. You said <laughs> in the absence of that, I'm sorry. And then, yeah, I, no, no, yeah, I can't remember okay. what I was going to say. My mistake. Um, I guess what I was going to ask is we, I feel like it would be harmful to even imply that they should be generating something unless they're generating the right thing. I'd we don't say, want a, a flurry of different, un, uh, not useful uh, S-bombs, attempts at S-bombs, like to populate packages and, and add to bundle, to file sizes and so on. Like that's, that's not helping anything. Uh, I mean, to be clear, I didn't suggest the document should say that they should be doing this. Um, right, but the, if you want to, right? Like, cause that's, I'm saying is that I think the point of view I think we should have is they shouldn't be generating anything until we know what they should generate. And it's not clear what they should generate yet, which is why I, I've so far written this document to say, don't do anything except follow these best practices. And we will let you know in the future as we help drive these, you know, like help to come up with the next steps. We shouldn't like, I don't want to just say, if you want to do this thing that we have no idea if it's good and that might hurt, you know, make packages bigger and, and, you know, slow down everyone's installs. Here's what like that. That's, that's not a helpful thing to, to enable or even tacitly endorse. Yeah. Then, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to reconcile that with this document um, and providing oh. a document like this. So, I mean, if that's I mean, yeah, if 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 the point of view, if, if the goal is to have a point of view on S-bombs, which makes sense, people will look to us to say, well, what do you think we should do with S-bombs? We should have something to say. But if the if in fact the best answer we can give right now is nothing yet, but we're still working on it, and that's not considered a good document, then maybe like, I don't know whether it's better to have to voice an opinion or just not. But like, that's where things are right now. There's nothing anybody should be doing yet because it's not clear what you can do with them. Like I could generate an S-bomb of, of some kind with all my packages in a bunch of different formats and I could bloat up all of my packages with those, but it's gonna be out of date three seconds after I publish it. So what's the point? Like, <laughs> why does that help anyone? They'll just generate it themselves when they need it. Like it's it's a very huge ask and cost to ship files in a package. To add one file to a package is a big ask. <laughs> and so there has to be a reason for it. And if we can't come up with a reason why developers should care about it, they're not gonna do it. Can we go to the automobile analogy again? Uncomfortable seat belts, car seats, all those things. Sure. People understand that they will die if they don't use them. <laughs> That's the compelling reason. Nothing will happen if they don't use S bombs to them. Yeah, I mean, I I think we have we have a blocker here, which is I think I'm just going to put this into my words, right? Which is, um, I think Jordan. Sorry, and sorry, apologies because I'm going to speak for no, you, no, I'm, but like you should totally I'm correct speaking. me if I get anything wrong. Yeah. It feels like you're you're coming up into this issue where like 
you you don't see a good use case for SBOMs and you're being tasked with writing a document that basically captures use cases and instructions on how to use SBOMs, right? And so I think like we need to figure out, and I think that there's differing opinions among the subject matter experts here that are on this call. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna have to figure out some way of um, overcoming that blocker, I think. Um, yeah, and, and I've been trying to, find, to figure out a use case a compelling use case that I can like, I, I'm, I'm not trying to monkey up the works. Like I'm trying to figure out a way that this can be successfully pitched to developers. And I've not with, with all this time and all these conversations, I've not heard one yet. And, and I, I'd love to, <laughs> it would make writing this document much easier, but like governments may require it, but we they haven't written that law yet. We don't know what they require. So we don't know how to tell people to meet that requirement. And so what I've got in here, the under the recommendations section, like that's to me, that is the only thing we can actually suggest because there's too much unknown still. So let me let me ask you some. Um, and I'm not trying yeah. to I'm not trying to trip you up on your own words here, but in no, July no. you wrote, I think the goal should possibly be to produce a guide containing trivial, simple instructions for a JS package maintainer to produce valid S bombs that meet the needs of end users. Mm -hmm. But now it sounds like, and again, I'm not trying to trip you up. So do you know, yeah. no longer agree with this as a goal for the document? Yeah, my, my understanding the has evolved. moments ago, it sounded like you did not want to do that, right? My, my understanding has evolved. And it, I now know, okay. do not see why, like, so there, there's many kinds of SBOMs, which is not something I fully understood at the beginning. The stuff everyone's focusing on now is a source SBOM, which in NPM is already 100% inferable from your lock file and no additional work needs to be done. And so the value add there of having a source S bomb is pretty much zero for the NPM ecosystem. You can generate one as you're at the end as an end user if you need to. And NPM even has it built in now, right? But the thing, the information that I see as, as valuable to capture and ship with the package is the stuff that cannot be inferred later. The machine, information about the machine on which I built it, information about my build process and the software that was was used there, th you know, things like that. But there, there's no tools that capture that yet. And like, so the only thing everyone's focusing on is the source and that there's, that's already there. So it's, it just doesn't. And, and like, given that you're trying to find out a list of, like, if you're trying to find out a list of what's in the package, so you can see if it's vulnerable, a list in what's in the package today is useless tomorrow because between today and tomorrow, something could have been published such that a new person installs something different. And so they get all their information already from their lock file. They don't need anything from me. So it, it just, I, I'm, I'm, so yeah, I, I just don't see yet. Like I, I, I can, I can, like I just talked about, I see in the future things that would be valuable for package authors to ship, but that's not what anyone's trying to talk about yet. A source S bomb is, is just not, I think not valuable here. So like, yeah, I mean, what what I hope is that we get to a point where there is a clear, uh, there are clear steps that can be followed, so that you can say, you know, run this thing during your build process, and it will spit out a build file, or run this thing just before publish, and it will document all the machine that you're running it on, and like the version of npm you have, and so on, and it'll stick that in your package too, right? Like that seems, that's more information. I'm a big fan of not throwing away information. That's why Git is great, and like. That information I would like to see preserved, but there's no tools that do that yet. And there's no file name conventions of where do you put this? And then there's no programmatic way anyone could discover and use it even if I did generate it yet. So we need all of those things before there's any recommendation I see to be, to be made there. And like, I know people are excited about SBOMs, but like, I don't think we should be, like just because it's a, it's a, timely time to get to make an s bomb guide doesn't mean there's much guidance to give yet because like on all of this stuff the hype cycle has long preceded the usefulness hmm. like i get why open ssf has operated that way because it's a chicken egg thing. Like you need the money and the, and the stakeholders before you can build the solutions. And so you have to get them interested and excited, but like <laughs> there's not, 
the, you know, the, the actual solutions have taken a long time to, to materialize for all the things they're working on. And many of them haven't, haven't really materialized yet. And I think SBOMs are in that bucket. They will. They just haven't yet. I'll, 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 being a, strong, a member of the Open SSS since the beginning, observing all these things firsthand, that's not an accurate assessment of what's happened there. No. Okay, correct it, please. I mean, I, or I've another given, time if you... I've given up on uh, trying to convince you, Jordan. I just, I have to say that. Okay. Yeah, I, I see a bunch of uh, really diverse industry stakeholders working on figuring out the best thing to do. So I see that too. I, I, I don't think anything I said contradicts that. It's just they, they're working it out actively currently. It's not worked out and recommendations come when it's worked out. Yeah, and and I think I'm we're suggesting that we help work it out as well for our ecosystem. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so too. But that this document to me isn't achieving that. To work it out, we have to get people to show up to meetings and and do the working. <laughs> like open SSF meetings. And we should do that, absolutely. Well, we're almost out of time and I don't think we're gonna get any further uh today so maybe we uh meet again in a week and <laughs> talk about this more i'm not sure what honestly i think yeah i mean maybe jordan you and i can can talk a little bit about like um trying to to see what we can do here like i think yeah. first i want to say uh I appreciate all of you. I assume good intentions and I still do assume good intentions. And this is a really um, interesting conversation for me to be a part of because this is a scenario where we've got very smart people with differing opinions, right? Um, Which is a, you know, a good place to be sometimes. Um, But I still feel like, um, like, I don't know what the next step is on this document and we need to figure that out. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I've learned a lot too. Again, I think the way that document is structured, some of the headlines could be probably altered just to give folks the context of where we are and where we want to be and what's right. what's real now. I think um, it, it, it changes the tone. I think just by changing the tone and structure um, might. Well, and this is the outline I was given from the collapse space feedback a few weeks back. So like I, lar- I largely just brought that in and I tweaked it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm open to a third round of, of a new outline, right? I, I originally just had the recommendations right up at the top, and this was the, the requested change. Uh, so I'm happy to keep changing it. Uh, I just don't know what that should look like yet. All right, well, I think we're on. meeting in two weeks time, Joe, or one week? Oh, I don't know. What is next week? Is there something happening on Monday? Do we know? Oh, do we? That's right. We meet weekly, not by yeah. weekly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. It'll be fine. Veterans Day is observed on Friday, so yeah, that should be fine. Great. All right. Well, let's let's talk some uh, async and off, you know, uh, Slack and whatever, and uh, we'll we'll keep working on things. And 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 I agree with you know what folks have been saying. This is a, a, a very interesting conversation. I'm I'm learning a lot, and it's good to kind of work mm-hmm. through the stuff. So we'll 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 keep at it. <laughs> um. Great. Right. Well, thanks, everybody. It was a great meeting. Uh, We'll talk to you you really soon. Bye.